So it really started when uh, I was approximately nine years old. I could have been 10 or nine, but I remember very distinctly um, this first lesson at school. And interestingly, I found that many other people had the same kind of hick when they, when they got into this first lesson. It was the first lesson in geometry. And the teacher went to the blackboard and said, today we're going to learn about geometry. And the first lesson in geometry is dimensions. And I got really excited because I had all these incredible world that I was living in, in my head. And I had all these interaction with all these other dimensions in my head. And, and I thought, oh my God, this teacher is going to talk about this for the first time ever. I'm going to have an adult that talks about this. And I got really excited about it. And I got so, so disappointed. Uh, it wasn't at all what I expected. The teacher went to the blackboard and made a little dot. And he placed beside the dot uh, dimension zero, zero D, and said this is, the, is a dot that represents a dimension that does not exist. And... Um, I was already confused. I'm like, oh my God, this is not looking good. I'm probably going to fail this class <laughs> um, because I could see the dot. And he was telling me that it didn't exist. And so already I had a problem with that fundamental axiom. And really, this is so crucial. This is so crucial to our understanding of reality. It, this very fundamental axiom of dimension bleeds into advanced physics, advanced mathematics, and all sorts of sciences, and really changes the picture of the way we see things if you know it's not accurate. So I, I didn't know all this, but I thought, well, I can see the dot, but if you say it doesn't exist, uh, I'll just go with that. And then he said, well, uh, because it doesn't have volume, um, it doesn't exist. So if you put a bunch of dots together and make a line, you still don't have volume. We'll call that dimension one. And that doesn't exist either. And, you know, I just kept on going with it. And I could see the other kids in the class were a little bit puzzled about what was going on. And then eventually... He put four lines together to make a plane, called it dimension two, and said that didn't exist either. It still didn't have volume. It was a two-dimensional flat plane. And, you know, I could see, uh, he, he used the example that the cartoons in our cartoon books didn't exist, right? And so I could see a lot of the kids were very disappointed. And... Then he did something extraordinary, something miraculous, uh, something that even puzzled me further. He, he took six planes, put them into a cube, and called it 3D, and said that dimension exists because it has volume. And I could see that everybody was like, okay. Um, there was a problem in logic there. Turns out that I found out much later that Buckminster Fuller had exactly the same problem in his uh, school, um, in his schooling, in his first lessons in geometry. There was a problem there because if you have a dot that doesn't exist, that makes a line that doesn't exist, that makes a plane that doesn't exist, then you cannot get existence out of six non-existing planes. So what you get is some unknown feature that could only be called non-existence to the fourth. <laughs> Not existence. 
And so here, fundamentally, there's an issue. And that issue has to do with our understanding of how reality emerges, how dimensions are generated, and how we can get existence, reality, atoms, objects, things in space, and how we solve the equations that describe how these things in space come through, how they get here. That is very fundamental. I didn't know all this at the time, but I knew that this principle that was being demonstrated to me was not quite correct. There was definitely improvements that had to be done to it. And I really felt like I didn't want to spend another day going through my life not knowing what a dimension was. So I decided I was going to solve this 